Today we're going to start uh, chapter number uh, 10. And the title is Dynamics of Rotational Motion. And we have two lectures. Today we'll cover the first uh, lecture. The uh, learning goals for today's lecture. The first one is uh, learn uh, what is meant by a torque. The second, realize how torque affects rotational motion. And the third uh, learning goal will be analyze the motion of a body using the rotational analog of Newton's second law. Our introductory slide here, we have a wrench and you apply this to a pole which you want to loosen and you can see the axis of rotation here and we ask the following question which of the three equal magnitude forces in the figure is most likely to loosen the bolt so you have here if a if b and if c and if A equals if B equals if C, meaning that the magnitude of all these forces is the same. The only difference that you see is how far they are from the point or the bolt on the axis of rotation. Now, if you do that, you will find out that if A is not going to be very effective in loosening or rotating the bolt. You will find that FB is more effective because it's further away. And then FC will not do anything because you're just pushing <clears throat> uh, along the axis of rotation. And that, of course, is not going to cause any rotation at all. So if you do that experiment, that's basically what you're going to find. So you'll find if you keep the forces, same magnitude, the one which is perpendicular to the axis of rotation and further, it will, have, it will be more effective. And this is basically how we're going to look at torque. Torque is basically what you apply to cause a rotation. So how do we look at that? Well, in this figure here, you have a body and you want to rotate this body around point O here. And you apply three forces, as you can see in the figure here, F1, F2, and F3. And we want to see how effective these forces are. Now, we're going to define what we call the line of action, and that's the action that you apply. So <clears throat> this is the point of rotation. That's the force. Now, line of action is the line along the force. So as you see here, this is what we call the line of action of force one, this one here. This one here, it's what we call the line of action of force two. And this one here is the line of action of force three. So that's what is the line of action is. The line of action of a force uh, is the line along which the force vector uh, lies. And then we have, uh, we have the lever uh, arm or the uh, moment arm for uh, the force which is perpendicular distance from O to the line of action of force. So this is what's known, you look at L1 here and L2, this is what's known as the lever arm or the moment arm and it is perpendicular to the line of action 
And how far is it from the uh, point O around which we basically want to rotate? So if we want to look at the torque of a force with respect to this point O, it is usually the product of the force and its lever arm. So that's our definition of a torque here. It is the product of the force by the lever arm. Meaning, the bigger the force, the bigger the torque, the bigger the lever arm or the moment arm, the bigger is the torque. So if we go back to our introductory slide, this is more effective. All the forces are the same, but it's more effective because in the case of B, you have a greater lever arm. And that's why we got more torque there. So that's the definition of our torque. And you can see that the force or the line of action and the lever arm are perpendicular to each other. The angle between both of them is 90. Of course, in the case of F3, there will be no action because your lever arm is equal to zero. You don't have a lever arm perpendicular to this force uh, with respect to O. So that's basically our torque. Now, when you do this type of rotation, you can either rotate this way, which is counterclockwise. So we say here C, C, W. So we say here C, C, W, counterclockwise. <coughs> and we take this positive. So we say this is we're getting a positive torque. Or you can rotate this way. And in this case, we call it clockwise. And in this case, we're going to say that we have a negative torque. Now, if you look at F1, F1 will cause a rotation this way, which is positive. And that's why we say tau 1 here is positive F1 L1. If you look at F2, okay, it will basically give you a tau, which is equal to minus F2 L2, which we say negative. Well, negative and positive here, meaning uh, which way is it rotating? So, for example, if you take your x-axis this way and your y-axis to be this way, the z-axis will be pointing out of the uh, screen here. will be pointing out of the screen for you. So if you go clockwise this way, it will be positive. Uh, Counterclockwise will be positive. You go clockwise will be negative. Counterclockwise, that means you're rotating around the positive z-axis, which is pointing out of the screen. And if you uh, rotate clockwise, it will be around the negative z-axis, which is in the screen. Now, sometimes, and we'll see that in the book. If you see a circle like this with a dot in it, in the middle, that means it's out of the page or out of the screen or out of the board. When you see a circle like this and you see cross in the center, it means in the page or uh, in the board or in the screen uh, of, of, the, uh, of the, uh, your computer here or laptop. So that's basically these, what these notation mean. So if you see that and the z-axis, it will be out around the positive z-axis, which we can say that's counterclockwise. And when you see that, we'll say it's in the page, which is clockwise. So we can assign a direction to the torque. Either it's counterclockwise or clockwise, but we'll say would the axis be pointing out or in or around the positive y-axis or negative uh, y-axis or the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis? Is this point clear? Now, let's look at the situation here, and we're going to consider a force F applied to a point uh, P here. So that's your point. And 
you're far away from a point O and your position vector is R here. And that's the force that you apply. And we want to calculate the torque. Now we're going to look at the magnitude of the torque first. And the magnitude of the, of the torque as we defined in the last uh, slide, it was the force multiplied by the lever R. Well, your force is this way. So that's your line of action here. So along this line of action, you want to find the lever arm that basically connects point O and perpendicular to the line of action. Now, if you look at your line of action and you look at your position vector here, if this makes an angle theta, and this is from here to here is R, then sine uh, phi, in this case, will equal to L divided by R. Meaning that L will equal to R sine phi. So your lever R is going to equal to R sine phi. So F multiplied by the lever R and the lever R is equal to R sine phi. So you will get F R sine phi. And that's basically the definition of our torque. Of course, you have to decide if it is going to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. So in this situation here, the force is going to rotate it this way, which is counterclockwise. And we have here, we say tau is out of the page. I told you a circle and a dot in it. That means out of the page, which meaning it's about the positive z axis. But that's the magnitude of it. Now, we could look at this differently now. Let's look at the force here. And uh, what is the angle between the R and F? So if you extend R all the way out, and you look at the angle between R and F, you will find out by geometry, if this is alpha, this will be, uh, if this is phi, this will be phi as well. If you choose this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis here, well, this force F makes an angle phi with the positive x-axis. So you can take an x component for it, which is F cosine phi, and a y component here, which is F sine phi. Now, if you consider your R here as a lever R, then the F cosine theta will be along that, and of course it will cause no torque at all with respect to O, as we say here. But F sine phi will be perpendicular to it, and it will be basically causing what? Causing the torque. So now we can rewrite F R sine phi as R F sine phi. And in this case, we're saying that the uh, component of the force perpendicular to the lever arm or the vector position will be the component of the force that is responsible for the torque. That will make it easier for us to write our torque. So uh, we can regard force as a vector. Position vector is a vector as well. And the torque here, since it can be counterclockwise about the positive z axis or uh, clockwise, which is, we'll say, into the board here, which is about the negative z axis, so it has a direction as well. So we, it is a vector as well. So I'm having two vectors and I'm getting a third vector. Now, you recall what we did in chapter number one. We said that C should equal to A, when C is equal to A cross B, C is equal to A, B sine phi. And I did not put the arrows on the top indicating I'm only taking the magnitude. The magnitude. So the magnitude of C should equal the magnitude of A, the magnitude of B sine phi, where phi is the angle between A and B. 
that's our definition for the cross product but c is a vector and uh, in chapter number one we said we use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of this vector but this the direction of the vector will be perpendicular to the plane of a and b so it is the same thing here if i have r f sine phi then i can write my torque as r f <coughs> which of course the torque here will equal to r f sine phi which is equivalent to this okay and i'm taking on the magnitude but you put a vector sign because in this case it is pointing out of the page around the z-axis and it could be also pointing into the way in the page which is around the negative z-axis recall that what we did in chapter number one we said that a cross b not equal to b cross a we said that a cross b should equal to minus b cross a so you have to be careful here the torque is r cross f not f cross r because that will give you the wrong direction so you always have to be careful here so we started from the line of action and the force and the lever arm and then we came with a definition where we take the component of the force which is perpendicular to the vector position where we can calculate the torque and of course you're going to use the right hand to decide on the direction this will only give you what magnitude here i'm not putting uh, vector signs on the top but you have to use the right hand to decide on the direction is this clear any question on this as we did in chapter number one you will use your right hand to decide on the direction of your uh, vector that result from the cross product <clears throat> you put your fingers in the direction use the right hand not the left hand be careful you put your fingers and then you curl them into uh, uh, B and that will give you the direction of uh, your uh, cross product so if you use this being your X and this is Y and this is Z now you look at your R here your R is along the X axis you look at your force which is now the uh, you're going to cross r onto f it is out of the page it's pointing toward you so if you use your right hand and you put your fingers in the direction of r and you curl them into f your thumb will be pointing up and that will be along the positive y direction here because we define torque as equal to r cross f so in this case, it is uh, the torque will be uh, along the positive y-axis. What happens now, you can turn around and go here. You still have the force pointing out of the page, but you're on this side here. And now you want to use the right hand. Well, you want to curl your fingers into F. And since F is pointing out, the only way that you can do that if you put your fingers this way and then you curl them like what you see here into f but in this case your th the thumb will be pointing in the direction of tau and in this case it will be negative y direction if we use the x and y as being our uh, axis on the plane and the z axis out so the force is out in both cases pointing out of the screen so you'll find that you have a change in the direction of the torque the magnitude of the torque in both cases will be the same because in this case it is the same force it is the same r i think the only difference will be what will be the direction so the direction of the torque can be found using the right hand rule and the right hand rule point your fingers of your right hand in the direction of r and then curl them in the direction of f your thumb will be pointing in the direction of the torque tau 
we use simple tau for the torque. Is this clear? Any question on this? Now, one thing that you have to uh, maybe we, we mention here, what are the SI units for the torque? Well, the units for the uh, uh, R is meters. The units for the force is Newton. So the SI uh, units will be Newton meter. So you have to keep that in mind. Is this clear? Good. Let's take the first example here. And the first example here, they give you a force, which is 3i hat plus uh, 4i hat plus 3j hat. Uh, Newton acts on an object at a point located at position, which is 6k hat. So they gave me the force in terms of unit vectors and the position in terms of unit vectors. And they asked me about the torque. The definition of our torque is equal to R cross F, which should equal, if you just take the torque, it should be equal to R F sine phi. Now, you have to find out the angle between these two vectors, but if it's written in unit vectors, we already talked about this in chapter number one, you use a determinant, where in the first row, you put I hat, J hat, and K hat, and in the second row, you put the first vector. And in uh, and the third row, you put the second vector. So here, you're going to put R, and here, you're going to put F. Now, the way to calculate this determinant here is we're going to take the first row. And I told you, in the first row, the first element is positive, the second is negative, and the third is positive. So the way we're going to calculate this, we look at the first element in the first row, which is i hat. So we write positive i hat. And what you do is you're going to eliminate this row, eliminate this column, and you'll end up with 0, 6, 3, 0. That's a 2 by 2 determinant, which is you can easily uh, do that. That's for i hat. The second element, <clears throat> which is now it should be negative z you eliminate the uh, column and the row and what you will be left with is 0 6 and 4 and 0 now you come to the third uh, element in the first row which is now going to be plus k hat and you eliminate the column and the row and you will end up with zero zero four and three now if you want to calculate the two by two determinant here it is this one minus that one so it will be i hat zero times zero minus six uh, times three and that will give you minus 18. now you have minus j and then this one, 0 times 0 minus uh, 4 times 6, and this will give you minus 24. And for this one, plus k hat, 0 times 3 minus 0 times 4, and that, of course, will give you 0. So you will get minus 18i hat plus, because you have a minus minus, plus 24j hat in Newton meter. And that's how you calculate the uh, torque in this case. It's if you you can basically find its magnitude, you can find its uh, direction, and so on. But in terms of unit vectors, you have all of that. Is this clear? Any question on this? Now let's take example ten point one to loosen a pipe. Fitting a weakened plumber stands on the end of a cheater applying his full 900 Newton weight at a point 0 0.8 meter from the center of the fitting. The wrench handle and the cheater uh, make an angle of uh, 19 degrees with the horizontal. Find the magnitude and direction of the torque uh, he applies about the center of the fitting. So that's the force 
900 Newton pointing toward the center of the Earth. That's his full weight. That's the point where you want to rotate, and it's 0 0.8 meters away. Now, we know our definition for the torque. Torque equals R cross F. The magnitude is equal to RF sine phi, or sine theta. So now you want to find out the angle between the force and R. It is this angle here. Now, if you do that, and you extend this one here, that will be 19, as you have there, and this will be 90. So 19 plus 90 will give you 109 degrees. So your theta here is 109 degrees. R is 0.8. And of course, your force is equal to 900 newtons. So tau will equal to RF sine theta, which is 0 0.8 times 900 times sine 109 uh, degrees. And that, of course, will give you tau equal to 608 in newton meter. And that's now the magnitude of your torque. Now you have to decide on the direction. Now it's going to rotate this way. And in this case, it's counterclockwise for you. And if you take this is your X and this is your Y, so the Z, so it's, it is about the positive Z axis and the positive Z axis is basically here out of the board for us. So we can put something this way and we put a dot in it. That means it's pointing out of the page or out of the board or out of the screen. So we dealt with two examples here. If you have your force and position vector in terms of unit vectors, or you just have them in terms of magnitude and direction. Is this clear? Is this clear? Any question on this? So that's how we look at torque and how we calculate the torque. Now, what happens if you have a rigid body and it is rotating, that means it has an angular acceleration. Is there any relation between torque and this angular acceleration? So imagine if this is the point around which you want to rotate this body here. So you take a point on the body here, let's call it M1, and it's rotating this way. So that's basically giving you a circular motion. So when you look at this point, and we talked about circular motion, you always have a radial acceleration and you have a tangential acceleration that will give you a radial force. And this will also give you a tangential force. And perpendicular to them, you'll basically get also a, a force which is Fz. Because when you apply a force, you want to rotate this which way you're going to apply. So the only component that it's going to make this point go around the circle, it is the tangential force here, which is we call F1 tangential. So the torque here, and since this is our x-axis, the y-axis will be this way or that way inside, and the z-axis will, so the rotation here is around the z-axis, and positive, because it's counterclockwise. So we'll just do it for this small, point mass that we picked on the body here. So tau 1z would equal to r1 times f1 tangential. That means how far is it from the uh, axis of rotation. So that's how, how far is it. It's r1 from the axis of rotation. Now, <clears throat> the force, you know that the force is equal to ma. So in this case, we call it m1a1. Now, you know that A is equal to R alpha when you relate linear to uh, angular acceleration. So we'll say that it is equal to R1, M1, and your acceleration here, A1, will equal to R1 alpha. But remember, I told you, for a body, theta 
gamma and alpha is the same. So we're using alpha z, which is the rotation of this body around the z axis. So tau 1 z will equal to m1. You have r1 and r1 will give you r1 squared alpha z. Now, like what we did when we calculated the moment of inertia, you're going to pick different points on this body and you add all of them up. So it will be, since all of them have the same alpha z, it will be m1 r1 squared plus m2 r, and you go on till you get to the uh, number of points that you basically are trying to get to. Now, this will give you the summation of your torque. Since it is rotating around the z-axis or the torque, so we call it here i tau z. Now, you remember this is equal to what? This is equal to the summation of m i r i squared, where i can go from 1, r i goes all the way to some value. And we said this is equal to i, the moment of inertia that we defined in chapter number 9. So this is equivalent to saying that and moment of inertia goes around an axis. So tau z is uh, equal to i z alpha z, but you're summing all of this. Now, if you recall in chapter four and five, we said that the summation of the force should equal to m a, or we can say that the net force should equal to m a. So here we're saying that we took one component, which is t tau z, should equal to i z alpha z, and this is analog to Newton's second law. <clears throat> In Newton's second law, you have mass and acceleration. Here you have moment of inertia and you have angular acceleration. And that's why at the beginning uh, and the top here, we said torque and angular acceleration. So there is a relation between the torque and the angular acceleration. Is this clear? Is this clear? So when you want to calculate a torque, you have to take the net torque. You take all the torques and you add them up, and this should equal to I alpha. And in this case, we're rotating around the z-axis, so it will be I z alpha z. Is this clear? So let's take an example where we're going to use this. Using torque and angular rotation of a rigid body, find the cable's acceleration for the system shown below. So we want to get the acceleration of this cable. You've seen this example uh, differently in, the, in chapter number nine. Now, the cable is pulling this way with nine in Newtons. The diameter here is 0 0.12 uh, meters. So R here will equal to 0 0.12 divided by two, which will give you 0 0.06 meters. That's your R. Now, the acceleration of this cable will be the tangential acceleration of the uh, cylinder here. And the tangential acceleration of the cylinder will equal to R alpha Z of the cylinder. Now, we know that Summation of tau z should equal to i z alpha z. But what is the causing the torque here is this force here. So tau should equal to r cross f, where tau equal to r f sine uh, theta. So you look at the angle here between r and the force it is 90 degrees so your tau that's coming from the cable here will equal to r f sine 90 and we say here ccw which is counterclockwise that means around the positive z axis uh, sine 90 is one so you get r f that's the only torque you have now the summation of the torques should equal to i z alpha z. I only have this torque here. 
And that should equal to alpha i z alpha z. That's not a two. That's a z here. I z alpha z. Now, I'm interested in alpha z here. So alpha z will equal to tau divided by i z. Now, tau is equal to R f. I z, that's the moment of inertia for a cylinder, solid cylinder, is equal to 1 half m r squared. So it will equal to 1 half m r squared. So you can cancel the square here with one of the r's. So the alpha z will equal to f over 1 half m r. f is 9, m is 50, and r is 0 0.06. This will give you 6 rads per second squared. That's now your alpha z. Now, the linear or tangential acceleration, which is equal to the acceleration or the linear acceleration of the table, will equal to uh, the cable will equal to r alpha z, which is 0 0.06 times 6, and gives you 0 0.36 meters per second squared. Is this clear? Is it clear? Good. Now, <clears throat> in this example here, you've seen that in chapter number 9, but we'll do it differently. And there we looked at conservation of energy. Now, you have what are the acceleration of the falling body and the tension in the cable. So it's a system. It will be moving with the same linear acceleration, but the pulley is going to be rotating. So if I only concentrate on the block here, and we'll go the symbol subscript for it, B, meaning a block. Well, it has an M, a G, pulling down, and there is a tension that's basically pulling up on it. Now, remember, if you take that direction is the direction of the motion, so you're going to say that mg minus t should equal to ma. I told you you can also do that differently. You can take the positive as always up, so you can say that it's t minus mg, but you're moving down, so it's minus ma. So it's equivalent to mg minus t is equal to ma. So if we take it along the direction of the motion, it will be mg minus t is equal to ma. And a will be the same for the system. But you have a pulley. And that pulley is a solid cylinder. And it is rotating. Rotating because the tension is pulling down on it this way. And that's your r. So the angle between T and R is 90 degrees. So there is a torque. We say that the summation of the torque around the Z axis here will equal to I Z alpha Z. We have only the one torque that's coming from the tension, like what we did in the last example. It will be R T sine 90 degrees. And sine 90 is 1. So that will give you R T. Now, the moment of inertia is equal to 1 half m r, and we're going to use capital M here for the mass of the uh, <coughs> pulley, r squared multiplied by alpha z. Now, you know that uh, alpha z should equal to a over r since a is equal to r alpha z. So we'll have RT equals 1 half M R squared A over R. So you can cancel the R with the square. You have one R here. It will cancel from here. So you'll have the tension is equal to 1 half mass of the, uh, of the uh, pulley, which is uh, capital M A. So you have two equations now. If you add equations <coughs> 1 and 2, T here is negative, T here is positive, they cancel out. So you'll get Mg equal to Ma plus one half capital Ma. Now your A now, it will equal to Mg divided by, you can take A here as a common factor. So it will be A multiplied by mass plus M over two. 
So A here will equal to mg divided by uh, the mass of the block plus the mass of the pulley divided by 2. Notes here, when the pulley is rotating, it affects your acceleration. That's not the case when we did that in chapter 4 and 5, when we ignored the pulleys. Now, of course, the tension here equals 1 half ma from equation 2. You put in your a, and you will get 1 half m uh, g, but multiplied by your acceleration, which is equal to m over m plus uh, mass of the uh, fully divided by two, you have a half. So one goes here, the two factors inside. That's why you have T will equal to, T will equal to uh, mass of the block, mass of the pulley G over two M plus capital M. Now, if you did this in chapter uh, four, probably, the value of t will uh, will 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 come from this equation here where your t is going to equal to m2 times g minus a but here we are including the effect of the rotation of the pulley and that's why you get this tension here and that's why in chapter 4 and 5 we always tell you ignore the masses or negligible masses of the cables, rope, whatever it is, which is good approximation. And we said the pulleys are frictionless. That means they are not rotating. The cable or the rope is sliding over. them. But in the case when they rotate, they have, we have to include them in. And this is the effect here. Is this clear? Any question on this? Now, we usually take few questions to look uh, and reason. And question one here, they tell you that for the four masses shown all have the same magnitude. F1 equals F2 equals F3 equals F4. Which force produces the greatest torque about point O marked with the blue dot here? You know that by definition, torque is equal to Rf. That means the magnitude of the torque is equal to Rf sine, sine uh, theta. So all of these forces have the same magnitude. Now, if you look, this makes an angle, F1 makes an angle of 90 degrees, F3 makes an angle of 90 degrees, but F4 makes an angle less than 90. And of course, F2 is along the uh, axis here. So if you look at R and F2, you can say the angle is zero or 180 degrees, and that of course will give you sine of zero or sine 100 is equal to zero. So t tau two is equal to zero. But r1 is greater than r3. That means how far, is, and also r4 has the same radius, uh, same distance. So r3 and r4 are equal. However, torque one, because it has a bigger r, will be greater, and we'll try to explain that, than tau 3, and tau 3 will be greater than tau 4, for one reason, because the angle that F4 makes with R is less than 90 degrees. And of course, that will give you uh, a value less than 1. So if you look at T3 here, it will be uh, R3, F3, sine 90, which will equal to R3, F, Tau 4 will equal to R4, F4, sine theta 4. And that will be less than R3, F sine theta 3, because sine theta 3 here will be 90 degrees. But sine theta 4 will be less than 1, meaning that T4 is going to be less than tau 3. So the greatest torque here is produced by F1. 
Note all of these forces are in the X, Y plane. You don't see anything out or anything in. So be careful with that. Okay. Is this clear? Now, same situation, but now we're saying we want the force that gives us uh, a direction pointed out of the port. Remember, we want to look at the torque, either it's pointing out or the torque is in or around the negative Z axis in this case. Now, this one here, F3 uh, will be going that way, which is clockwise. This one will go in this way, which is a clockwise. This one will be going that way, which is counterclockwise. And counterclockwise is positive. That means it's going to give you a torque that is pointing out of the page. And that's why the answer here is F4. We're just trying to reason our understanding of uh, torque in terms of magnitude and direction here. Is this clear? We dealt with this example, but we can deal with it with uh, a question here. And they tell us what is the right uh, option here for the torque. Now, in the example, we extended this and we found that this angle is equal to 109 degrees. So your torque is equal to R F sine theta, which is 0.8 times 900 times sine 109 degrees. Now, I don't see this in any of these options here. However, sine 109 degrees is equal to cosine 19 degrees. So you have to be careful with that. So it's this answer here is equivalent to B, which is 0 0.8 times 900 times cosine 19 degrees. And that's why we say the answer here is B. Is this clear? Any question on this? Now, the last question that we have here, a glider of mass M1 on a frictionless horizontal track is connected to an object of mass M2 by a massless string, of course, you see the string, but massless, that means we're going to ignore its mass, and we always make that approximation. The glider accelerates to the right by the object, uh, accelerates downward. As this falls down, it will accelerate this. And the string rotates the pulley. In uh, 4 and 5, we always say the pulleys are frictionless, so the pulley is not rotating. But in this case, it's rotating. So that will have an effect. What is the relation among T1, which is the tension in the horizontal part of the string, T2, which is the tension in the vertical string, compared to the weight M2G. Now, remember, when we dealt with this in uh, 4 and 5, we said the pulley is not rotating. So T1 and T2 is equal to T, and it's equal to T. We just put it as T. But since this pulley is rotating, we have to be careful now. The tension is not going to be the same on both sides uh, of the pulley. So if we concentrate on M2 here, M2, G will be down, and T2 will be pulling up. And the motion is down. So if I look at the summation of the force along the Y here, it will be M2, G minus T2 will equal to M2A. Now you can... Uh, take this to this side and bring this to the side here. So T2 here will equal to M2 times G minus A. So right away, we can tell that T2 is going to be less than M2G, the weight. 
So we know that T2 here is less than M2G from this side here. Or we effectively, you can say that M2G is greater than T2. So I look at my options here. M2G equals T2. I know that this is wrong. M2G greater than T2. Well, I can argue with that, but I still have T2 is equal to T1. M2G greater than T2 and greater than T1. Well, I have to find more. And here, M2G is equal to T2. I know that this is basically wrong. And that's, of course, we'll see. Now, I have to come and look at the pulley. The pulley is rotating. And it's rotating this way. That means counterclockwise. That means around the negative Z axis. Now, remember, we said that the summation of tau Z should equal to I Z alpha Z. And you know that A should equal to R alpha Z, meaning that alpha Z should equal to A over R. Now, what are the torques that are causing this? You have two here. You have T1, which pull on the pulley this way, and you have T2, which is basically pulling that way. So if we look at our definition of a torque, which is R cross F, and tau will equal to R F sine theta. Now, T1 is pulling that way, and that's R. And the angle here is 90 degrees between both of them. So it is T1 R, but it's positive. So if I want to look at the summation of my torque here, I will say that it is T1R. Now T2 is going counterclockwise. It's pulling down. And the angle is 90 degrees. So it is minus T2R. That should equal to I Z alpha Z. But which way? This is moving. It's moving in this direction. So also you have what? You have a minus sign here. <clears throat> so now you can basically take, uh, you can multiply the minus out. So you can say T2 minus T1 multiplied by R should equal to I Z alpha Z. You can cancel uh, the R from here, and you divide by the R. And that, of course, will give you, uh, you have to include in uh, the IZ, but I'm not going to do that here. So T2 here, going to equal to IZ alpha Z divided by R plus T1. So T2 is greater than T1. And so the option that we have here as a right option is M2G is greater than D2, but T2 is greater than, greater than T1. And that, of course, is the right answer in this question here, C. Now, if we dealt with this in chapter 4 and 5, we say ignore the mass of the cable or massless cable or strings, whatever it is, that's okay. But we said the pulleys are frictionless. That means they don't rotate, and the tension is the same. But when the pulleys are rotating, you really have to include in that effect of the torque. And now the tension on both sides are different. Is this clear? That's why you have this right answer here. So what we defined today, we basically looked at the torque. And we said that the torque basically is a the force multiplied by the lever uh, arm or the moment arm, which is the distance from perpendicular to
to the line of action where the force is basically acting. And then we came up to a more general uh, definition <clears throat> where we define uh, force and position vector. And we said tau is equal to Rf. And we said that tau is equal to Rf sine phi, where phi is the angle between R and F. And of course, you use the right hand to decide on the direction. And then we said, if you look at the net torque or the total torque, and we chose here the z-axis, we can do it in, in general, that should equal to I moment of inertia z alpha z. It could be, by the way, the z here could be y, it could be x. Okay, it's the axis of rotation. And remember, when we talked about the moment of inertia in chapter number nine, it depends on which axis you want to pick, you will get a different calculation for the moment of inertia. And this is what we call the analog to Newton's second law when we said the summation of the force is equal to ma, or you can say that the summation of fz should equal to mz, okay, along the z axis, or it could be the x axis or the y axis. And this is the analog here. So we talked about torque and how you calculate torque and how is uh, torque is related to the angular acceleration. Analog to how is the force related to the linear acceleration. Is this clear? Any questions on these? Great.